Dear Lord, thank you for the lovely weather on this beautiful day. Thank you for being with us every day, for giving us strength and keeping us safe and healthy. I hope that every day brings us closer to you and that our faith will continue to be strong as we learn to depend and trust in you more and more. I pray that we would learn to love one another and we would be able to glorify your name with our hearts. Please strengthen us in your faith. I pray that you would open our ears and hearts today as we listen to your word. Please give us listening ears and help us not to get distracted by things around us. I pray that we will be able to give our attention to you during this important time. I truly hope that we will learn how important it is to turn to you during small or big moments in our lives. I pray that we will look for you and continue to be hopeful for our future, especially during this time when our situation seems to be looking better. With the positive movement, with more and more vaccinated people, I pray for the day that we can meet each other soon. Please bless our pastor, teachers, and our students, and I pray that through you, we will continue to grow in the glory and spirit of your holy name. In your most holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto him, Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He doesn't. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come he will come again to judge to judge at the right hand to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
저희 원주민 교회에 많은 관심과 또 기도와 물질로 후원해 주시는 주님의 제자교 성도님들을 만나 뵙게 되어 너무나 반갑습니다. 저희 교회는 지금으로부터 약 60년 전에 칼밀러 목사님과 또 나나이모 원주민 부족의 장로였던 놀맨 조니에 의해 설립되었습니다. 한때는 수백 명의 원주민들이 세례를 받고 예수님을 영접할 정도로 성령님께서 살아 역사하시는 유구한 전통의 원주민 교회입니다. 지금은 벤쿠버섬의 53기 부족의 복음을 전하고 예수 그리스도의 몸된 교회를 세우는 비전을 갖고 이를 위해 최선을 다해 사역하고 있습니다. 아, 제가 이 교회에 부임하게 된 배경은요. 2015년도에 아, 2015년도 말에 이 나라이모 원주민 교회가 목회자가 없음으로 인해 꼭 문을 닫아야 한다는 안타까운 소식을 접하게 되었습니다. 아, 이 원주민 교회는 제가 벤쿠버에서 사역을 하면서 수년간 단기 선교를 왔던 곳이기에 이런 소식을 접할 수 있었는데요. 기독 가운데 이곳이야말로 하나님께서 원하시는 하나님께서 이끄시는 곳이라는 확신을 갖게 되어 지금으로부터 만 5년 전이 2016년도에 부임을 하게 되었습니다. 그래서 벌써 올해로 6년 차에 접어들었네요. 아, 첫두해 동안은 너무나 힘들었습니다. 무엇보다 환경적으로도 60년 된이 원주민 교회는 제대로 관리가 되지 않아서 어, 바로 이제 옆에 붙어 있는 저희가 사택에서 살았는데요. 이 싱크대 등 집안 곳곳에서 쥐들이 뛰어다녔어요. 물론 제가 오기 전에는 바퀴벌레가 있었다고 하더라고요. 그런데 제가 왔을 땐 감사하게도 바퀴벌레는 없고 쥐들만 있었습니다. 그런데 어, 그것뿐만 아니라 이 교회 주변에는 이제 그 노숙자들과 마약에 취한 사람들이 이렇게 그런 많이 있는 곳이었어요. 그래서 이런 분들이 낮이고 밤이고 종종 사택에 무단 침입을 하는 등 여러 가지 사건 사고가 끊이지 않았습니다. 사역적으로도 교회가 개척된 지는 오래되었고 유구한 전통의, 전통을 갖고 있는 교회였지만 동시에 오랜 기간 동안 사역자의 부재로 인해 지역 원주민들과의 관계를 다시 새로 개척하는, 새로 만들어 가야 하는 상황이었습니다. 그래서 저는 다시 개척한다는 마음으로 사역을 시작해서요. 매주 신방과 기도 모임을 갖고 또 주일 예배 후에는 백인분의 식사를 준비해서 대접하고 
또 갈데 없는 아이들을 위해 여름에는 매일 아침, 점심, 오후 간식을 먹이며 말씀을 가르치는 등 최선을 다했습니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 주일 예배에 원주민 성도들이 한명 나올 때도 있었고요. 두명 나올 때도 있었고 어쩌면 아예 안 나올 때도 있었어요. 거기에 제대로 된 사례비는 거의 받아보지 못했습니다. 그러다 보니까 이 원주민 교회에서의 사역을 포기하고 싶을 때가 여러 번 있었습니다. 하지만 하나님께서 저희 부부를 이곳에 보내셨다는 확신이 있었기에 모든 것을 하나님께 맡기고 참고 인내하며 어, 있다 보니까 살아계신 하나님께서 역사하시기 시작하셨습니다. 3년차가 되던 해부터는 매주 주일 예배 3, 40명의 원주민들이 참석을 했고요. 또 크리스마스 예배 때가 되면 은 어, 100여 명의 원주민들이 참석해가지고 예배당을 가득 채우는 역사가 일어났습니다. 그리고 4년차에는 요 4년차가 되니까 그동안 간절히 기도했던 주일학교를 담당할 사역자 부부를 하나님께서 보내주셔서 어, 많이 나올 때는 매주일마다 아이들만 한 3, 40명의 아이들이 출석하는 그런 사역의 연례를 어, 맺기 시작했습니다. 그래서 그 해인 2019년도 말에는요. 저희 교회가 속한 교단에서 원주민 사역과 다민족 사역을 담당하시는 목사님께서 저희 교회를 직접 방문해 사역을 둘러보시고는 저희 교회가 저희 교단에 속한 b c 주의 모든 원주민 교회들 중에서는 저희 원주민 교회가 가장 성장하고 안정된 교회라는 기쁜 소식을 전해주셨습니다. 참고로 b c 주에 있는 대부분의 원주민 교회는 저희 교단에 속해 있어요. 지난 일이지만 다시 한번 하나님께 모든 영광 드리고 또 원주민 또 저희 원주민 교회를 위해 그동안 기도와 여러 모양으로 보내주신 주님의 제자이신 성도님께 감사의 인사를 드립니다. 이처럼 살아계신 하나님의 역사와 은혜로 첫 4년간 사역이 급속도로 성장했지만 작년부터 5년 차인 작년부터는 팬데믹 사태 때문에 더 이상 교회의 주일 예배뿐만이 아니라 그 어떤 모임도 가질 수 없게 되었습니다. 특히 올해 들어서는 저희 나라형 원주인 마을 대거 코로나 바이러스 확진자가 나와서 마을을 완전히 봉쇄하는 그런 상황이 되었어요. 그래서 이제는 집 앞에 찾아가서 집 앞에서 이렇게 그동안 찾아가서 인사도 하고 신방을 했는데 집 앞에서 하는 이제 신방도 그렇게 힘들게 되었습니다. 물론 이런 상황 가운데서도 계속해서 우리가 무엇을 할수 있을까 고민하며 할수 있는 사역들을 찾아 하고 있습니다. 아, 특별히 다음 세대 사역과 관련된 지성과 영성을 고루 갖춘 영적 어, 다음 세대의 영적 리더들을 길러내기 위한 기독교 학교를 그동안 계속해서 계획하고 어, 이것을 위해 기도하고 있었는데요. 팬데믹 상황 가운데 교회는 모이기가 힘들지만 어, 학교는 계속해서 여는 그런 특수성을 고려해서 올해부터 이런 학교 설립을 본격적으로 추진하려고 하고 있습니다. 이러한 계획을 위해서 저희 원주민 교회 사역과 어, 저희 교회를 위해서 많은 앞으로도 많은 기도와 후원 부탁드립니다. 이 passage is taken from 1 Chronicles 29, 1-9, and the title of today's message is Freely and Wholeheartedly. 1 Chronicles 29, 1-9 Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great, because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God, gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple, 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the buildings. For the gold work and the silver work and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen, now, who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? Then the leaders of the families, the officials of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They gave toward the work on the temple of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 dirhams of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron, 
anyone who had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the temple of the Lord in the custody of Jehiel the Gershonite. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. Amen. Amen. Okay, my lovelies, I don't know if y'all have guessed this already, but today's passage is taken from our workbooks. <laughs> our workbooks. It's found in pages, it's found in pages 88 and 89. So if you have your workbooks with you right now, can you turn your books to page 88 and 89? But if you don't, pause me, run, go get your workbooks, then unpause me because we're going to be going through the questions together throughout today's message. So go, you're back, you're back, you're back. You're back. Okay. So we've been QTing through the book of First Chronicles for a couple of weeks now. So I know y'all know that First Chronicles is in the Old Testament. That's why there's no point in me asking you the New, New Testament, Old Testament question. But I have a different question. What book comes before First Chronicles? Second, it begins with a K. Second, Yes, you got it. Second Kings. Second Kings comes before First Chronicles. Okay, moving along swiftly. <laughs> Let's read. Have you all opened your books? Let's read question number one together. Draw a circle on the word have provided and a triangle on the word gave every time they appear in today's passage. Okay, so to the word gave, I want you to add the words give and given. So every time the words gave, give and given are mentioned in today's passage, mark it with a triangle. And when have provided appears, mark it with a circle. 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 What's happening? Circle. Okay, so ready, set, mark. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Done? Done? If you're not done, pause me. But if you're done, let me tell you what I got. I found have provided once, once in verse two. I found have provided once in verse two. And I found gave, give, given, gave, give, given five times, five times in verses three, six, seven, eight, and nine. So gave, give, given. I found it five times in verses three, six, seven, eight, and nine. Let me know if y'all got anything different. Okay, so question numero deux, un, deux, trois. That's all the French I know. Can we read question number two together? Why did David consider the temple important? And the answer is found in verse one, y'all. Why, why, why? David considered the temple important because the temple, David calls it, what does he call it? A palatial structure. It's a hard word. A palatial structure, which means the temple was like a palace, big and beautiful. It was important to David because the temple was not for man, but for God. It was important because the temple was not for man, but for God. God. Okay. If we read on to the next verse, we read that David, with all his energy, all his energy, with everything he had, provided for his God's house. Remember back then, people believed that a temple was God's house on earth. It was where people could find him here on earth. So David goes, with all my energy, with all my energy, I provided for my God's house. Gold for the gold things, silver for silver, bronze for bronze, iron for iron, wood for wooden, oxen stone. Guys, I don't even know what oxen stone is. Do y'all know what it is? I have no idea what it looks like. But apparently it's really, really, really expensive and really, really precious. Continuing. And a setting stone, antimony stone, and colored stone. Every precious stone. Every, every precious stone and even alabaster stone. I've prepared this, but not just in small amounts, not just in small amounts, but in a lot, a lot, a lot, 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 a lot of all this valuable, precious, expensive stuff David provided. But why? Why? Why did David do this? Because David wanted only the best for who? For God. He only wanted the best of the best for God. But it wasn't only David that wanted all this precious stuff that wanted to give all this precious stuff to God. It was also the leaders, the leaders of the families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of the many troops, the officials in charge of the king's work. All of them, all of them gave their precious things to be put 
in God's house. Nobody did this by force. Everybody gave to God because they really, really, really wanted to. Nobody forced anybody to do anything. Everybody was happy to give their precious belongings because they believed that they were giving them to God. Which leads us into question number three, y'all. Can we read it all together? One, two, three. With what heart? Did David and the people of Israel bring offerings to God? And the answer is found in verse 9. With what attitude did the people give to the Lord? With what attitude, y'all? They gave freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. They gave freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. Amen. Okay. Okay, guys, what's the point of today's passage then? If you love God, you're supposed to give all your money, all your gold, all your clothes. And what else? Silver and jewelry. Why is that hard to say? Jewelry to God. Do you guys have a lot of gold and a lot of silver and lots of money like David? Do you? I know I don't. I don't have many things. I don't have a lot of things. So then does that mean that I can't love God because I don't have a lot of things? Because I don't have a lot of things to give to God? Because I don't have silver or gold to give to Him? No, that's not what it means, right? That's not the point of today's story, of today's passage. So, sorry. I don't know. So the message of today's passage isn't about all the stuff David and the people gave to God. It's about their attitude, their attitude towards God. David starts off with a, yes, yes, I love my son Solomon and I know he's chosen by God. But for this palace, for this house of my God, I want to give only the best, all the best that I have. And for and the people weren't like, well, then you do you and we'll love God the way we want to. The people loved God just like David. They might not have had, they might not have had as much as David, but their love for God was the same as David. That's why the Bible says everybody gave freely and wholeheartedly to God. There's no comparison of who gave what or how much somebody gave and how, how little somebody gave. Verse 9 tells us that everybody, everybody rejoiced and everybody gave willingly and wholeheartedly. I believe it pleases God when we give Him what we have, when we give it to Him willingly and wholeheartedly. But what does this mean, y'all? Guys, have you ever liked someone? You can tell me. I'll keep it a secret. Shh, I won't tell your parents. You can tell me. Have you ever liked someone? Well, you know, when you like someone, you think about them a lot. And when you see something nice or when you eat something good, you want to buy it for them or share it with them. Not because they ask you to. You just want to do it all because you just want to do it. You just want to do all that stuff because, well, you just want to do it. If you want to do that stuff for that person, um, you want to give that person stuff, not because they tell you to or ask you to, you think of them first and it makes you happy to think about them, to do things for them, to buy things for them. Well, I think that's what it means to love someone, to like someone, to do stuff for someone willingly and wholeheartedly. You're not the focus, they're the focus. So the story, so in the story, to David and the people, all their stuff, all that precious, valuable, expensive stuff, that wasn't the focus. It was God. It was their willingness and joy and wholeheartedness and wholeheartedness, their attitude towards God, towards giving to God, towards loving God. That was the focus. My babies, are you loving God willingly and wholeheartedly? Does reading the Bible or praying or thinking about God bring you joy? Do you think about God, read about God, talk about God when no one tells you to? Just because it brings you joy and just because you want to? Sometimes we fill our days with so many things that have nothing to do with God. But from today, from today, I pray that we fill our days spending more time praying to God, reading the Bible, trying to do things that we think will make Him happy. And on that note, guys, did you know that June and July are missions-focused months at our church? So we got this request from our church's missions department asking if you could write, if you could write 
letters to kids in Spain just to let them know that someone in another part of the world, someone they have never met, is praying for them, thinking about them, and wants them to know that God loves them. But the thing is, we have to write it in Spanish. So I'll post a sample for you guys on the worship guides I send your moms. And all you have to do is copy it and ask one of your parents to bring the letter here to our church's office when you're done. Okay, and the church will send it to Spain once like they've gathered all the letters. But only do this, only do this if it makes you happy and if you're grateful to do it. Like only do it if you want to. Okay, and before we end today, do y'all remember the prayer request? The prayer request we got from missionary Cho, who's in Nanaimo. Do y'all remember? At the, it was the fourth clip today. Y'all remember, he asked that we pray for God's wisdom so that he's able to lead this, his churches, the churches there, uh, through this pandemic. And he asked that we pray a Christian school be made so that kids in Nanaimo can come to learn more about God and pray. And he asked us to pray that um, he, he stays strong. He stays strong both physically and spiritually. So, yeah. Let's pray wholeheartedly and let's pray willingly, guys. Heavenly Father, thank you. We have so much to be grateful for. We have received so much from you. Father God, we want to give you something. We want to give you the best of what we have. But Father, sometimes we fill our days with things, with unimportant things, with things that have nothing to do with you. And we pray. We move away from you, but Father God, help us, help us to think more about you, to pray to you more, to give you more of our time, to give you more of our thoughts, to give you more of our love. Father God, we just want to give you the best of what we have. We might not, we might not have a lot, but Father, whatever we have, we pray that we give it to you wholeheartedly and willingly. And Lord, we pray for our missionary. We pray for his health. We pray that he stays healthy both physically and spiritually. And we pray for his churches in Nanaimo. We pray that uh, they pull through, through this pandemic. And we pray that a, a Christian church be established, be built at, in Nanaimo so that the children there can also come to know you and learn more about you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, guys, I have a little announcement. So, You know how we have our Bible quiz next week? We have our Bible quiz next week. And we said it was going to be at 11, but we've changed the time to 2 because we have on-site services as well now. So guys, don't forget, it's not 11, but it's at 2 p.m. next week. And because it's going to be online and we can't have all of y'all screaming <laughs> um, into the screen, like we'll never know who got the right answers. So what I want you to do is prepare for four cards. Well, okay, I'll do it one by one. Four cards. One with the letter A, one with the letter C, <laughs> one with the letter D, one with the letter B. So the answers are either going to be A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. So when you think the answer is A, I want you to, like during the quiz, when you guys think, if you guys think the answer is A, I want you to pull up your answer A so your teachers and I can see, yeah, like your answers. If you think the answer is C, pull up the card C. If you think it's B, the card B. And D, D. So that's all you have to do to prepare for the quiz. Okay? And I mean, it could be simple. You could do it on a white piece of paper, a colored piece of paper, anything, just as long as you have A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we're going to go over today, today's questions. This, this is the final batch of questions. And guys, don't forget, the, the, the quiz is at 
2 p.m., not 11 p.m. Okay, are you guys learning stuff from this? I hope you are. I hope you are. Okay, so question number one. How old were Moses and Aaron when they spoke to Pharaoh? A. Moses was 88 and Aaron was 82. Moses was 80 and Aaron was 83. Moses was 90 and Aaron was 95. Moses was 95 and Aaron was 92. What y'all think the answer is? And the answer is Moses was 80 and Aaron was 83. Question number two. How many plagues were they, y'all? How many plagues? A. 12, B. 13, C. 7, or D. 10. How many plagues were there? What y'all think? The answer is D. 10. There were 10 plagues. Question number three. What was the first plague? Okay, what was the first plague, y'all? Frogs filled Egypt or boils broke out on the people and animals of Egypt? Hail rained on the land of Egypt or the water of the Nile turned into blood? Which one is it? A, B, C, or D? Well, they're all the plagues that happened, but what was the first one? And the answer is is the first plague was the water of the Nile turned into blood. Okay, question number four. What was the last plague? The last plague. Okay, all the livestock, as in the horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, sheep, and goats belonging to the Egyptians died, or Egypt was in complete darkness for three days, or every firstborn son in Egypt died, or locusts had invaded all of Egypt. What y'all think it is? These are all the plagues that happened. But what was the last one? The last plague was every firstborn son in Egypt died. Okay, so how did the firstborn sons of the Israelites not die? If all the firstborn sons in Egypt died, how did the firstborn sons of the Israelites not die? Is it A, the Israelites put the lamb of, sorry, the blood of a lamb on the top and the sides of the doors of their homes, just as God commanded? Or B, the Israelites put the blood of a cow on the top and sides of the doors of their homes, just as God commanded. Or C, the Israelites locked their doors, just as God commanded. Or D, the Israelites prayed to God and he decided to let their firstborns live. What y'all think it is? A, B, C, or D? Well, the answer is the Israelites... Put the blood of a lamb on the top and the sides of the doors of their homes, just as God commanded. Okay, just as God commanded. Okay, question. Oh, no. Now we have our memory verse, our memory verse. And it's taken from Exodus 15, 15, 1. Exodus 15, 1. Then Moses, have y'all found it? Genesis, Exodus. It's the second book of the Old Testament. I'm going to read it. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. You know when they sang this? They sang this after they crossed the Red Sea. When God divided the waters of the Red Sea so that the people could cross it. So what do you think is uh, what happens in verse 10? It's sorry, what what can not in verse 10, what continues on? Does it go, I will praise his name forever and ever, or he saved us and brought us out of Egypt, or both horse and driver has hurled into the sea, or D, he loves us more than words can say. What do you think it is? I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver has hurled into the sea. What are they talking about? They're talking about the Egyptians, how all the Egyptian soldiers, they passed the Red Sea, but they drowned. Okay, so I hope you guys learned something from that. Um, Have a great week, guys, and I love you. Bye.